Hey guys, so today I am talking about baking soda and my five favorite uses in my vegetable garden and what the mixtures are and how to apply it and one that will cover your entire yard and it involves a specific type of insect that makes life in your yard miserable. So let me get started and I'll tell you those five that I really like using in my vegetable garden. There are two ground rules you want to follow when using baking soda in the garden and these are the most important two rules I can tell you. One is do a test spray on a small area of one plant that you want to, that has a problem, powdery mildew, aphids, whatever the problem is, but do a test spray on one or two leaves and wait 48 hours. You don't want to spray your entire plant and discover later on that baking soda does contain salt. So you don't want to discover later on you've killed the entire plant with too much of the mixture or it just had a bad reaction. Number two is to apply after sunset or right at sunset, uh, which is happening now here. So I shouldn't have to worry about sun scorch or the water on the leaves acting as a magnifying glass. So those are the two ground rules. I would definitely tell you, follow that every time that you apply this. And most of the other things, you don't want to spray in the middle of the day when the sun is at high noon, you're going to scorch your plants. So make sure you remember those two rules. Okay, one thing to remember about baking soda is that it has a pH of about eight and your plants prefer more neutral soils or neutral pH, which is around six, uh, six to seven. So you want to make sure that you realize that you're changing the pH if you use too much baking soda. But there is one specific plant that will benefit from the baking soda right at the base of the plant. And I'll explain that to you in just a second. First, I'm going to mix up our most common uh, formula for baking soda, which is the insecticide for aphids and other plants, insects you're going to find around your plants. So I'll do that right now. Okay, guys, so this is the mixture for the in insecticide that will kill insects that are harming your plants. So we've got a little bit of water in the container. We're going to do three tablespoons of baking soda. Okay. We're going to do one tablespoon of olive oil and one tablespoon of baby shampoo, preferably a well-known baby sh shampoo like Johnson's because you know it's safe. It's one of the most safest products made since you can use it on infants. Okay, we're going to carefully mix that. Okay, so I'm going to mix this with my chopstick, my always handy chopstick that I keep in the greenhouse or in my shop. I found a million and one uses for it. Okay, I'm just going to mix that thoroughly to make sure it's well blended. Then I'm going to add in the rest of our gallon of water, only one gallon. And what I would recommend is if you want to keep this on a shelf is to use some painter's tape and label your gallon size container so you'll know what you have. So this is exactly one gallon. I'm going to put it into our pump sprayer. And whatever I have left over, I'll put it back in my gallon container and carefully label it so it doesn't get mixed up with something else. I'm just going to carefully pour this into the pump sprayer. As always, I'm going to make a mess no matter how hard I try. But everything in the mix is perfectly safe, so we don't have to worry about toxicity. All right, we're going to put our cap back on. And we'll head out to the garden and spray for any insects we see out there attacking our vegetables. I think. Let's give it a little pump here. So this is use number one is for an, as an insecticide for baking soda. Okay guys, so these yellow squash have seen better days. We're at the end of our growing season and we're also at the peak time of an insect infestations. So I'm just gonna carefully mist spray. You can actually see insects taking off as I spray. You can angle my wand up here on the end of my sprayer so I can come from up under the leaves. I highly re recommend this sprayer. It just makes it so much easier than a handheld pump sprayer. I can just charge the container and I can focus on the task at hand. And so again, you can spray down. I'll put a link to the Amazon page where you can purchase one of these. And I just want to get the leaves wet. And just, we need another charge there. 
recharge it there. You just want maybe just running off the leaves a little bit to make sure you've gave adequate coverage. And so this is the formula that I used for insects where I don't have to worry about any toxic chemicals. All, all relatively benign. Remember that you want to do the test spray. Wait 24 to 48 hours and make sure that the plant reacts okay to it. If it doesn't, if you see some leaves that are wilted, reduce the strength. You know, go back to one and a half tablespoons, do another test spray. But I don't think you're going to have that problem. But anyways, if you do, just do the test spray. And remember, don't spray in the middle of the day. Wait till sunset or just after sunset. Okay, the second thing you can use this exact same formulation, this three, one, and one, three tablespoons of baking soda, one, one tablespoon of baby shampoo, and one of the olive oil. Same exact formulation you can use for powdery mildew. And you can see that's what's happening here. There's just too much humidity in our environment. One thing I will say is this is better for prevention rather than cure. So if you're wanting to cure a plant that's heavily infested with powdery mildew, you're probably not going to have a lot of luck with it. But it's a lot better to do this once a week, maybe two times a month if you don't want to do it once a week, and you can prevent powdery mildew from happening. It's a heck of a lot easier to prevent than to cure. So that would be use number two in the same formulation as use number one as our general insecticide. Okay guys, so the next use, and it's at 100% concentration directly out of the box or out of a container, is putting it on slugs and snails. And so you can just pour it directly on there and it will kill them, but you have to be careful because this does contain sodium. And so once it's in the soil, you're going to have to do a lot of mixing. Uh, you could put it around the edges, but like I said, you want to make sure it's not anywhere near the root system of your plants. Wait. Is that not the biggest slug you've ever seen? <laughs> no, it's actually an overripe Japanese eggplant, but they're going in the trash or they're going to be composted. So, sorry, I just thought I'd add a little bit of levity, levity there. Okay, guys, so this one is very controversial. There's people saying don't do this, and there's people saying do it. And so this involves tomatoes, and they're, they're having a very acidic taste. So if you wanted to sweeten your tomatoes, and I've done this, and I've to me, it seems like the tomatoes are not as acidic and they're sweeter, but um, it, and it actually says it on their website for Arm & Hammer to do this. So they recommend putting in a large amount, something like a quarter cup at the base of the plant. I would say only do one to two tablespoons, mix it in with the soil, then, then wait until you get some tomatoes from it. And then if it's not sweet, it's very acidic, add a little bit more. But again, be careful because sodium is the enemy of almost all plants. So you can try that, but like I say, there's a lot of controversy and a lot of people say, absolutely don't do it. But I like sweet tomatoes. So have you ever heard anybody say they had no enemies or they have no enemies? Well, that person could have not been a gardener because the number one enemy of every gardener is the common ant, or in the South, we call them fire ants, which um, my wife can tell you they're brutal. They're very brutal. But this mixture is going to take care of those. It's going to cause them to internally explode because the baking soda, when they eat it mixed with the secondary product, will cause their stomach to rupture. And as tragic as it sounds, it will get rid of the ants that are infesting your garden. So this is a pretty straightforward uh, mixture. We're going to do 50-50. 50% baking soda and 50% sugar. Now this is cane sugar. You can use white sugar. Just any kind of real sugar, no artificial. We're going to take that. We're going to mix it, mix it up thoroughly. Now we're going to go out and find some of our worst enemies in the garden and we'll, sh we'll just sprinkle it directly on their bed. I'll show you where we're going to do that. Okay guys, so we have found some of our worst enemies right here and there's ant beds everywhere. And an interesting fact about fire ants, um, they're mainly in the southeast and they may have made their way to the west coast. I'm not sure about that, but they started in Brazil and this goes back over 100 years ago, my understanding is they actually took a ship from Brazil, some type of product, produce, whatever it was. They were on the ship. They made it to the port of Mobile in Mobile, Alabama, and they spread throughout the southeast like wildfire. So we're just going to disturb the nest just a little bit. 
and you can always tell fire ants because they move so much faster than normal ants and I'm just going to sprinkle some of this all over the bed and so they'll think they're having a massive dinner party of course it won't be a good ending to that dinner party hey guys so I wanted to say thanks for watching it's in the middle of a massive heat wave here in the south we're having 99 and 100 degree days here and it is brutal so it's hard to work in the greenhouse until at well after sunset but anyways, I hope you're enjoying the content. If you are, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate every single comment and every suggestion. As I've said in many videos, and I hope I'm not being too redundant, I'm still learning. I think everybody will always be learning, even if they call themselves a master of whatever they're doing. So I hope you're learning and I'm learning. We'll learn together. So have a great day.